good morning students and welcome to today's class so in the last class we had started with a new chapter that is multiples and factors so in the last class we saw what are prime numbers composite numbers and also we revised what are uh, we saw what are the differences between multiples and factors correct so in today's class what we'll do is we'll uh, quickly see what we have done in the last class and we had a few problems left in exercise 3.1 we'll complete that and we'll do divisibility rules today okay we'll learn what are divisibility rules or tests for divisibility all right so first of all we saw what are prime numbers and composite numbers so what are prime numbers numbers that have only two factors that are that is one and the number itself are called as prime numbers so any numbers which have factors as one and the number itself are called prime numbers then composite numbers numbers which have more than two factors are called as composite number now one has only one factor that is one itself so it is called as a unique number one is called as a unique number it's neither a prime number nor it is a composite number and the smallest prime number is two okay smallest prime number is two and two is also the only even prime number okay it's the only even number which is prime okay so that is prime numbers and composite numbers then multiples and factors what are multiples a multiple of a given number is obtained as the product of the given number and any counting numbers okay so it's a product of given number and uh, and any counting numbers okay then factors what are factors all numbers that can exactly divide a number without leaving a remainder are called as factors okay so whenever you divide a number and it divides completely without leaving any remainder then it is a factor of the number okay then we saw comparison of multiples and factors so what are the comparisons of multiples and factors we saw that multiple every number is a multiple of itself but every number is a factor of itself and all its multiples so every number is a multiple of itself and every number is a factor of itself and all its multiples okay then every number is a multiple of one okay every number is a multiple of one and one is a factor of every number okay one is a factor of every number then multiples are obtained by multi multiplication multiples are obtained by multiplication factors are obtained by division so there are countless multiples of a number but factors there are fixed number of factors for any given number okay and all multiples of a number are greater than or equal to the number itself but all factors of a number are less than the number or equal to the number itself so these are few differences between comparison of multiples and factors now let's solve the few questions which were left in the exercise 3.1 okay so in exercise 3.1 last class we did one and question two we were left with question three four and five so we'll complete that now and we'll move on then we'll move on to the next topic okay so first third question at a sports meet hurdles are placed after every 12 meters find the distances of the five hurdles from the starting point so they're telling in a sports meet there are some hurdles placed okay and they are placed after every 12 meters they're telling to find the distance of the five hurdles from the starting point so how will you do it to find the distance of the five hurdles from the starting point we'll find the first five multiples of 12 okay let's do that now okay so the hurdles are placed after every 12 meters correct so the first five multiples of 12 will give the required distances that is the distance of the hurdles from the starting point so what are the first five multiples of 12 we have 12 ones are 12 so 12 centimeter then 12 twos are 24 so 24 centimeter 12 threes are 36 36 centimeters 12 fours are 48 so 48 centimeters and 12 fives are 60 60 centimeters 
so the distance of the first hurdle from the starting point is 12 uh, sorry it is meters not centimeters so the distance of the first hurdle from uh, the starting point is 12 meters the second hurdle and the starting point is 24 meters starting point and third hurdle is 36 meters starting point and the fourth hurdle is 48 meters and the fifth hurdle and the starting point is 60 meters so these are the distances of the five hurdles from the starting point so this was question number three so copy down the answer for that okay so moving on to question number four so 36 pens are to be packed in boxes such that number of pens in each box is the same write the different ways in which this can be done hence list the factors of 36 now they are telling the 36 pens which need to pack in boxes so, so that all the boxes have same number of pens so what you have to do you have to list the factors of 36 so we'll write it like this okay in multiplication form so 36 is equal to 1 into 36 so you can pack 36 pens in one box only or 36 is equal to now you have to to find the factors you have to find or go through every table if 36 is there so two 18s are 36 so we can pack two boxes with 18 pens each then 36 is equal to 3 into 12 so we can pack three boxes with 12 pens each in it then 36 is equal to 4 into 9 so four boxes with nine pens each and 36 is equal to 6 into 6 so six boxes with six pens each so now how many ways did we have here these are all the factors of 36 there are no more factors so there will be no more ways in which you can pack the pens so how many uh, ways we found one two three four and five so there are five ways in which you can pack the pen in pens in the boxes okay and the factors of 36 are 1 2 3 4 6 9 12 18 and 36 okay so this was question number 4 so i hope you'll have copied it down so i'm moving on to question number 5 so 60 students are participating in a camp for an activity they need to arrange themselves in rows and columns such that no student is left behind list the different ways in which this can be done so there is a camp in which 60 students are there and they need to arrange themselves into rows and columns so that no student is left behind okay so these are columns like this and these will be rows okay so to find this you have to uh, to list the different ways in which this can be done you have to find the factors again okay so the to arrange themselves they need to find the factors of 60 so 1 into 60 is 60 2 into 30 is 60 3 into 20 is 60 4 15s are 5 12s are and 6 10s are 60 okay so what they can do they can um, either make one column with all the 60 students in it or they can arrange themselves in 2 into 30 two columns 30 rows or 30 columns and uh, two rows it depends okay so 3 into 20 4 into 15 5 into 12 and 6 into 10 so these are the different ways in which they can arrange themselves in rows and columns without anyone leaving behind so how many ways are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so they can arrange themselves in 6 ways so these are the 6 different ways in which they can arrange themselves Alright, so these were all the questions in exercise 3.2. So, we are done with exercise 3.2. So, now we will continue with the next topic that is tests of divisibility. What is the meaning of divisibility? Divisibility means when a number can be divided by another number exactly without any remainder. For example, we have, uh, if I ask you to find if 24 is divisible by 2. So, I can divide 24 completely by 2 without any remainder means 24 is divisible by 2 okay so there are different rules which you by which you can find the numbers are divisible by these different numbers so we'll see tests of divisibility for 2 3 4 5 6 8 9 10 and 
eleven. Okay, so first of all, two to see if uh to test if a number is divisible by two. What you will do? You have to see if the digit in ones place is even or zero. Okay, so here they have given an example seventeen thousand two eighty four. Here four is in ones place. So if this now four the number in ones place or the digit in ones place if it is even or zero, then the number is divisible by two. Now four is an even number, so this entire number seventeen thousand two eighty four is divisible by two. Okay, so this is the test of divisibility for two. Now to see if a divis number is divisible by three, what will you do? The sum of the digits of the given number should be divisible by three. So whichever number they have given you, you have to add all the digits in that number. Okay, and the sum that you get should be divisible by three. Then it means that the number is divisible by three. So we here we have one seven two eight six. So if I add these digits, one plus seven plus two plus eight plus six. So when I add all the digits, I get the sum as twenty four. Now we know that uh three eight is twenty four. So twenty four is divisible by three. That means seventeen thousand two eighty six is also divisible by three. So these are the first two divisibility rules for two and three. Okay, then the divisibility rule for four. The digit in the tens and ones place taken together is divisible by four. So when they give you a number and tell you to find if the number is divisible by four, what you'll do? You'll take the last two digits of the number, that is the ones and the tens digit. Okay, you see the ones and the tens digit. If those two digits are divisible by four, it means that the entire number is divisible by four. Okay, here they have taken the example one thousand seventeen thousand two eighty four. Now now the numbers in ones and tens place is eighty four. So now eighty four is divisible by four. We know that four two zero is eight and four one zero is four. So it is completely divisible by four. Eighty four is divisible by four. So one seventeen thousand two eighty four is also divisible by four. Okay, so this is the rule for divisibility for four. Now moving on to five. Whenever a number is ending with the digit five or zero, that is the digit in ones place is five or zero, then the number is divisible by five. So seventeen thousand two eighty five. In ones digit we have five, so this number is divisible by five. Okay, if this was seventeen thousand two eighty, okay, that is zero in ones place, then also the number would be divisible by five. Then. The num divisibility rule for six. The number is divisible by two and three. Now we we have seen the divisibility rule for two and three. Now if the given number is divisible by two and three, okay, it should be divisible by both two and three. Then only the given number will be divisible by six. If the number is only divisible by two but not three, then that number will not be divisible by six. Now seventeen thousand two eighty six. Now the ones place is six, which is an even number, so it is divisible by two. Now three one plus seven eight eight plus two ten ten plus eight uh eighteen and eighteen plus six twenty four. Now the sum of the digits is twenty four. Twenty four is divisible by three, so this number is also divisible by three. So the number is divisible by both two and three. That is why it is also divisible by. Six, okay. So that was divisibility rule for six. Now divisibility rule for eight. The digit in the hundreds place, tens place, and the ones place taken together is divisible by eight. So for four, how tens and ones place place taken together should be divisible by four. Same way, the digits in hundreds, tens, and ones place taken together should be divisible by eight. Then only the number will be divisible by eight. So, for example, seventeen thousand two eighty eight. So here the one hundred tens and ones placed together is two hundred and eighty eight. So two hundred and eighty eight is divisible by eight. That is why seventeen thousand two eighty eight is also divisible by eight. Okay, so this is divisibility rule for eight. Then the sum uh, for nine. The sum of the digits is divisible by nine. Same way, how for three, the sum of the digits should be divisible by three. 
for nine also the sum of the digits should be divisible by nine then only the number will be divisible by nine okay so here they have taken seventeen thousand two eighteen nine so when i add all the digits one plus seven plus two plus eight plus nine i get twenty seven and we know that nine three is twenty seven so twenty seven is divisible by nine so seventeen thousand two eighty nine is also divisible by nine all right now ten the divisibility rule for ten if the digit in the tens ones place is zero then the number is divisible by ten if the number ends with a zero then the number will be divisible by ten okay so this is the easiest divisibility rule last one eleven now difference between the sum of digits in odd places and that in even places is equal to zero or a multiple of eleven so what does this mean we'll see with the example here the example they have taken is seventeen thousand two eighty one so they have told sum of digits in odd places what is the odd places here this is the first place this is third and this is fifth so one three and five these are the places these are odd places so when i add that that is one plus two plus one which is four then even places even places is this two and four so the digits in that is seven plus eight seven plus eight is fifteen now the sum of odd places is four sum of even places is fifteen now i have to find the difference between these so fifteen minus four which is eleven okay so eleven is a multiple of eleven so it is divisible so the entire number is divisible by eleven so as we do problems you'll get uh, you'll understand it much more clearly okay so let's see a few problems which are there in your textbook okay so exercise 3.2 on page number 114 okay exercise 3.2 on page number 14 so we have three questions here 1 2 3 and for your homework i want you all to do c and d of all the three questions okay c question and d question of all the three questions so 1 2 3 4 5 6 are for your homework and the rest of the six problems will do it now okay so uh, this questions are for your homework so mark these questions you will be doing it for your homework okay so check now well, let's continue check if the following are divisible by 3 6 and 9 okay so first is 2 40 Six. So let's see if it is divisible by three, six, and nine. Okay, so two hundred and forty-six. Now, first of all, they have told to see if the div number is divisible by three. What is the rules of divisibility for three? You have to find the sum of the digits. Now, sum of the digits here is two plus four, which is six, and six plus six. Twelve. So the sum of the digits is twelve. Now twelve is divisible by three. Correct. Twelve is divisible by three. So two hundred and forty-six will also be divisible by three. Okay. Sum of digits is divisible by three. So the number is divisible by three. So two forty-six is divisible by three. Now six. Now what is the rule of divisibility for six? The number should be divisible by both two and three. Here two hundred and forty-six. In ones place we have six, which is an even number, so it is divisible by two. And we also already saw in the first step that the number is already divisible by three. So since it is divisible by both two and three, it is divisible by six also. Okay, now to see if the number is divisible by nine. Now here twelve, we should know that the sum of digits is twelve. Now twelve is not divisible by nine. The, uh, so that is the sum of digits is not divisible by nine. So it means that the number is also not divisible by nine. So two forty six is divisible by three by six, but it is not divisible by nine. Okay, so that was the first question. Now second question one two seven eight one thousand two hundred and seventy eight. Now we have to find the sum of the digits here first. What is the sum of the digits? One plus two three. Three plus seven, ten, and ten plus eight, eighteen. Correct. Now sum of the digits is eighteen. So to check if the number is divisible by three, see if eighteen is divisible by three. Six three is is eighteen or three six is eighteen. So that means eighteen is divisible by three. So one thousand two seventy eight is divisible by three. Okay. Then 
sorry this is not 246 it should be 1278 okay this is 1278 not uh, 246 so you can write there 1278 now 1278 it is ending in 8 that is one place is 8 which is an even number so it means it is divisible by 2 and we already saw that it is divisible by 3 since the number is divisible by both 2 and 3 it means that it is divisible by 6 okay it means that the number is divisible by 6 now 18 is divisible by 9 correct 18 is that is the sum of digits is divisible by 9 so 1278 is divisible by 9 okay it is divisible by 9 so 1278 is divisible by 3 6 and 9 all right so this is question number 1 a and b now question number 2 question a and b will solve now okay so uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll continue uh, question number 2 and 3 in the next class okay for your homework do only c and d of question 1 so if you want you can even try to do uh, question number 2 and 3 for your homework but we'll be doing it in the next class either ways and in the next class we'll also do prime factorization all right so we'll continue in the next class students do your homework and uh, try to learn the rules of divisibility for 2 3 4 5 6 8 9 10 and 11 all right i'll see you all in the next class again thank you